Greetings, my name is Robert and I am the owner of Mayor Systems International, the developer of the Mayor Web Project. You're watching video number five in the Therapist Builder video series and the uh, TBS provides expert education for therapists of all levels and you can find the uh, link to the website, to uh, the YouTube site on Quick Client screen after you log in. Today is August uh, 17th, 2020. Please like, share, and subscribe. That helps us out a lot. It drives people to uh, our YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, we started looking at cognitive behavioral therapy, and I said there was going to be three or so videos. Uh, I think there's already three. There's going to be 11 or so by the time this is done uh, simply because so many people use cognitive behavioral therapy. So without further ado, let's jump into this today. And um, again, a legal notice. Basically, uh, I suggest you pause and, and read this, but uh, you're responsible for what you do with the content here. These are suggestions. Use it if you can if you want, if you think it's right, and if you don't, then skip it. And uh, this is only designed for professional counselors and therapists. Um, expert training, psychological issues, treatment of uh, specific client problems, education uh, for therapists who counsel others. Those are some of the things that we're, we're doing here. Um, and this particular one is uh, related to, uh, as you can see, the A in the ABCs of QB, uh, C, CBT. Uh, I've got so much material, I have broken down the ABCs into three separate videos, trying to keep them under 15 minutes. So let's get started here with an introduction to the A in ABCs. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy investigates the connection between human thought and human behavior. Proverbs 23.7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The core belief of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy states that when we modify thinking behaviors and emotions will change. Thoughts influence emotions and some people will go so far as to say they actually determine or even dictate the emotions. Emotions don't stand alone as separate entities disconnected from everything else. Cognitive behavioral therapy endeavors to change both behaviors and emotions by challenging irrational thoughts. There are some unique elements of cognitive behavioral therapy that set it apart from other therapy models. Cognitive behavioral therapy recognizes that the client most certainly has cognitive distortions. And we looked at the cognitive distortions uh, in the last video. Modifying these distortions are a key element of CBT. When the cognitive distortions have been confronted and replaced with more appropriate thinking patterns, behaviors and emotions will change. Another key and necessary element of CBT is the use of Socratic questions. This is the most effective modality for confronting, disputing, and modifying the client's cognitive distortions. In order for the therapist to claim that they are using CBT, they must be focusing on cognitive distortions and uh, their mitigation through Socratic questions. Um, anybody who's not doing that is engaging in talk therapy rather than actual CBT because CBT tr goes after the cognitive distortions and uses Socratic questions. And so, talking about Socratic, there is Socrates himself. He's a Greek philosopher in 470 to 399 BCE. Plato was one of his students. And he was the originator of a teaching method that became known as, as Alenkus, also known in English as Socratic method or Socratic questioning. Unique way to teach philosophy back in those days. Solving problems or developing moral, ethical, philosophical, and philosophical belief systems was done by breaking a problem into a series of questions rather than dictating answers or uh, just lecturing 
the student was forced to explore and research the answers to their own question or to the teacher's questions. Each of the student's answers was then met again with another question. This method was designed to discover the underlying belief structure of the student. And here we have our ABC blocks. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy uses an acrostic to help define the, define the process of therapy. The treatment method is known as the ABCs of CBT. We will discover the application of this treatment method rather extensively. This will include hands-on exercises, which I have quite a few of, uh, for therapists to use with the client. And actually, there's, it's, this is ABCD. ABC is the cycle of um, cognitive distortion. The D is disputing uh, that and getting in the middle of it, disrupting it, and trying to stop the cognitive distortion cycle. Before, an actual cog before actual cognitive behavioral therapy begins, the therapist should always administer the CBT client assessment that's in the program and quick test. Those two assessments must be administered on a weekly basis. Cognitive distortions will change quickly during therapy and a cognitive distortion flare-up may indeed result in a substantial spike in anxiety and depression. Uh, take the guesswork out and administer. Um, Anxiety and depression are probably the two key elements uh, of the emotional states that happen when a person distorts. So it's very important to go after quick test every week and to look at uh, cognitive distortions to see what's changed. Things will change quickly. And here we have our cycle. You can see the blue arrow is, is indicated as the activating event. Um, a is sometimes called the activating situation. It's usually called the activating event, although I don't like that. I like the word antecedent uh, better. And we'll see why. An antecedent, the A, sparks a cognitive distortion, or more than one, sometimes a series. Antecedents. Uh, can be anything that come through the five senses. And that, that's how we always cognitively distort. When an antecedent is commonly, uh, uh, while it's commonly called an activating event, I believe that narrows its focus and it can kind of cause you to miss something. The trigger is not always an obvious event. And let me interject something before we go on here. Um, a coworker came in one day and said that he was extremely depressed. And I asked him what was going on, and he said it was the smell. And I said, what smell? And he said, I walked past the bakery this morning and I smelled fresh bread. And he said that brought back the memory of Saturday mornings when his mother would cook bread and muffins and everything all morning, Saturday morning. His mother was dead. And so I brought back the uh, whole episode of her dying just from the smell of the bread. Uh, that's why I don't like uh, activating event. Was that really an event? I don't know. It was an antecedent, though. It came before the emotional effect. That's what an antecedent is, something that comes before something else. A cognitive distortion episode may even occur prior to the actual antecedent. For example, a person is in school, they're going to have a big test next week. The antecedent is the thing that comes before the cognitive distortion, but they drag this test into the present, and they begin to fret about it. And the more they fret about it, the more the possibility of a major cognitive distortion. And the antecedent hasn't even happened yet. But notice they've brought that test into the present. In order for a cognitive distortion to happen, it has to be brought into the present. Future can affect cognitive distortions, only things that are in the present, but we can go out and grab something that's in the future and bring it into the present. A cognitive distortion may also be prompted due to something from the past. This is what we usually deal with in counseling. 
A victim who lives in the past focuses on past activating events is not taking responsibility. The antecedent itself may re-enter the conscious mind or a proxy event. We see this with uh, PTSD. Uh, a person has been in combat, there are a lot of explosions. They go to fireworks and they have an event happen because there's explosions. It's not the same thing, but their mind connects the two. It brings that past event into the present because something in the present has brought that past into the present again. Future can be brought into the present. The past can be brought into the present. But we can't have cognitive distortions where there's no connection to either they don't happen because of a future event. It's brought into the present. They don't happen because of a past event. The past event is brought maybe with, through a proxy into the, the present, but it's always the present that causes the cognitive distortion. Uh, any therapeutic focus on the past, therefore, should be for the purpose of understanding the present cognitive distortions. If you fall into the quagmire of digging up a client's past traumas, you got to realize that the past is likely distorted and misrepresented or misremembered. The client may have negatively reframed it. Let, let's think about the car accident. You and I are standing on a corner and we're waiting for the light to turn so that we can cross the street. And there's a huge traffic accident in the middle of the intersection. Police get there ask for witnesses and we volunteer. You give a statement, I give a statement, and the police look at the two statements, and it's like they, we saw two different accidents. Your statement is totally different than my statement, and the accident just happened. Think about, think about this. If we can't remember what actually happened 30 minutes ago, how can we trust data from 30 years ago? We'll get into this a little more um, when we get into the B in ABCs in the next video. Um, yeah, I won't say any more about that now. Uh, there may be value in discovering a client's past, but only if the client is making a past-present connection with the data. Activating events can be past events being relived, reframed, reactivated by the client. Uh, and there's going to be a future video about autistic fantasy. I'll look that up if you want a preview of what it's going to be. Technically, an activating event can only be in the present. We've already gone over that. If it cannot be a past event, it cannot be a past event or a future event. Uh, it's got to be something that is brought into the present. There is... A possibility, and again, we'll, we'll deal with this in, in the future, but I'll just mention it here. Many times the process results in an A to C connection, and there's a, a thing that we're going to deal with later on about where's the B. A person can actually skip the B and go from A to C, uh, from an activating event to the consequences, which would be a panic attack. In fact, panic attacks are probably rooted in A to C because they, they, they totally skipped the B. Um, let's see. Sometimes past or present activating events will be done with present tense proxy events. We like, as humans, to keep things in containers. Uh, and, and proxy events are containers. We'll talk about containers later. And that's all we've got for A. And uh, we're still a little under 15 minutes, which I didn't think that was going to happen. So we'll see you again for the B in ABCs of CBT.